Welcome, everyone. My name is Dewey Garner, your presenter for today's webinar, coming to you from sunny Southern California, talking to you today about a few real-world examples of cities migrating from infrared to GPS technology. Today's webinar will run approximately 30 minutes. If you have questions during this event, there are a few ways to ask. Either go to the WebEx chat window and enter your question, or wait for the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. If we don't have time for all of your questions today during the webinar, we will follow up by email afterwards to make sure you get an answer to your question. As a regional manager with GTT, I work with cities across the southwestern United States to help them find the best solution for emergency vehicle traffic signal preemption, commonly referred to as EVP, as well as transit signal priority, or commonly referred to as TSP. I have been with GTT for nearly five years now, working in the fast-paced and exciting intelligent transportation systems business, specializing in EDP and TSP solutions. At GTT, we are focused on solutions to get emergency response and transit vehicles to their destinations faster, safer, more predictably, and at a lower cost. Opticom systems have been deployed in over 3,000 cities worldwide including 40 of the top 50 largest cities in the United States, covering some 70,000 intersections and 50,000 vehicles, providing first responders, public transit, and municipal services the assistance that they need to better serve their community. Today's presentation is part two of a three-part series of webinars that GTT has been hosting to provide you with more knowledge about our solutions and capabilities in the intelligent transportation system space. We hope you'll find this webinar useful and informative and that you will take time to think about what you're learning today and see if it will add value to your efforts in supporting the agencies and cities that you serve. In webinar one, we went in depth and detail on great key advantages of GPS over infrared technology. One of the main advantages is that GPS system transmits the vehicle's exact location to the intersection every one second. Then the face selector uses this information to calculate the vehicle's estimated time of arrival at the intersection. Rather than simply using an estimated distance of the vehicle from the intersection based on light intensity, the GPS system uses radio signals to determine the estimated time the vehicle will actually arrive at the intersection, which also takes into account the vehicle's speed variations due to changing traffic conditions, slower as well as faster responses, et cetera. Estimated time of arrival is especially important when vehicles traveling at different speeds utilize the same system. For example, an ambulance versus a fully loaded pumper truck or a faster moving police vehicle. This ensures that EVP or TSP activation is performed at the optimal time and point early enough to clear both the traffic ahead and the pedestrian crossing while not leaving cross traffic waiting any longer than is necessary, which is a much more intelligent use of this technology. In the previous webinar, we went into great detail about some of the advantages of GPS technology over infrared. But as a brief reminder, I want to remind you of some of those advantages. For example, less intersection maintenance, increased reliability, no line of sight dependencies, preemption around corners, GPS precision, more IDs available, one antenna versus two or four detectors, Antenna placement is much less critical than infrared detectors, et cetera. Again, we have already talked about these in a previous webinar, so I won't go into any further detail, but if you missed the last webinar, you can view it at your convenience on our website at www.gtt.com 
forward slash YGPS. Because of its superior performance, additional features and capabilities, Opticom GPS is now the preferred choice for new EVP and PSP deployments by over 10 to 1 when compared with infrared technology. In addition, more than 50 Opticom customers upgrade from infrared to GPS Opticom technology every year. To capitalize on the technology advantages GPS offers them as well as the communities that they serve. Now, this is where the story gets interesting. I would like to share with you a few real-world examples of some customers who have done just that. Okay, so we'll begin in the heat of the desert in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. Even though what happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas, we are going to let you in on a project that they've been working on. Clark County Fire and Public Works Departments in the city of Las Vegas have been a valuable Opticom infrared customer for over 20 years, and they have been expanding each year at a very rapid pace. There are literally thousands of emergency response, fire, police, and transit vehicles utilizing the Opticom infrared system in Las Vegas today. So you can say that this is a prime location for the implementation of a new and better technology. With over 41 million people visiting Las Vegas last year, and the majority of them arriving in cars, navigating the streets, especially Las Vegas Boulevard, can be especially difficult for anyone most importantly, the emergency response vehicles serving the Las Vegas community. With over 75 fire stations and 25 hospitals in the Las Vegas area, getting through the heavy traffic and crowds to get to an emergency situation and then back out to the hospitals can be very tricky. We interviewed Clark County's Deputy Fire Chief, Eric Newman, to learn some more about their challenges and why they decided to upgrade to Opticom GPS. We asked Chief Newman about some of the challenges that he had seen with infrared. Yeah, I mean, it worked, but it had, felt like it had to be more line of sight. You know, if you make the corner, like Louis was talking about earlier, so you really have to focus, and the mechanics have to aim it a certain way. And then there was always the issue of the lens not being clean and not being able to pick it up because of dirt, and, you know, just a lot of other uh, intangibles that prevented the infrared from working. Public works wasn't the staff as it used to be, and then it wasn't getting around to, you know, hitting all of those intersection infrared lenses to clean them. So it would work, you know, because not only us use the infrared, but the police as well. Those are all good points and things that we are hearing other cities talk about as well. To recap, here are some of the major challenges that needed to be addressed by an upgrade to an Opticom GPS system in Las Vegas. Number one, they were experiencing heavy traffic congestion on Las Vegas Boulevard. Two, trees and pedestrian bridges were blocking the infrared signal. Three, they were experiencing slow response time due to heavy traffic congestion. Four, emergency vehicles proceeded through against red lights at the intersections. Five, accidents, injuries, and vehicle damage. In addition to these items, Las Vegas found that the infrared emitter range was not long enough, so a fire truck could be en route to a call, but because of the traffic and the traffic being so backed up, they couldn't communicate forward to the intersection. As a result of the outstanding collaboration between Clark County Fire Department, Clark County Public Works, Global Traffic Technologies, and our local authorized Opticom dealer in Las Vegas, it was agreed that 12 intersections on Las Vegas Boulevard would be upgraded from infrared to GPS along with six Clark County fire apparatus, which included three engines and three rescue trucks. This was all in an effort to prove that GPS technology could show improvement over the existing infrared system. Chief Newman, how did you learn about GPS as an option? We knew that Anderson Fire Department was using the satellite GPS. So based on their reports, we're getting a better bang for their buck in regards to moving the traffic quickly I had an opportunity to be behind in front of a Henderson rescue as it was coming up eastern, and I saw that how each light, two or three lights ahead, started turning green. You know, it just moved the traffic. So then, talked to Chief Washington, said, hey, this is what I saw in Henderson. Try this particular system on the strip, which is one of the busiest, you know, mile and a half, two miles in the country. And then the next time that you talk with Julie and the group, let's see what we can do. 
that. So that's kind of how it really got started. So after a brief meeting with Clark County Fire Chief Washington and necessary approvals were obtained, we got started on this new project. It took approximately 30 to 45 days to install and configure all the GPS equipment. At that point, we performed driver training for all the shifts of users. Although we saw immediate improvement in the response times, the evaluation period lasted for 60 days. This is so we could get an accurate picture of how the GPS system would perform under strenuous circumstances and strenuous conditions. It is essential that I point out here that our ability to actually draw the intersection approach zones was key to our success. This means with GPS, we can actually pull down street maps on a computer program and draw actual approach zones versus relying on the direct line of sight like we used to have to with infrared. With the ability to draw and designate these approach zones, we are able to lengthen and shorten them according to the specific needs and driving patterns on Las Vegas Boulevard. This allowed forward traffic lights and left turn signals to turn green and begin flushing traffic out of the way normally as soon as an emergency vehicle entered into this approach zone, oftentimes getting the traffic moving three to four intersections ahead of the emergency vehicle. Chief Newman, can you explain the process from your end? We got installed pretty quick. Our mechanics put the modules on our, on our engines. We put it on three engines and three rescues. One day I went to the station to see how it was working, and the captain at the station said, you know, it's working about 20 or 30 percent better, and whatever adjustment they made, they were going on a call, and I just happened to be at the intersection, and they came around the corner, and I saw every light turn green, and I was like, man, this is like splitting the red sea. <laughs> you know, cars was moving, the, the engine and rescue was rolling down, and this was about 7 o'clock at night on the strip. It was uh, it was amazing. And had I not been there, I wouldn't have believed it. I can tell you that. So I, I'm definitely a big proponent of the GPS. It, it got me so because I physically had a chance to see it sitting right there in my vehicle. I saw that they turned everything green. They got traffic moving. The guys and ladies that were working there felt like they wasn't stuck in rush hour traffic. Because at one point in time, as Dewey mentioned earlier, <clears throat> sometimes you couldn't move the traffic. We just turned off the lights and sirens because it just didn't make any sense. You know what I mean? It just it, we wasn't, it wasn't moving. But when I saw what I saw, oh, how it just hit every light, oh, it was awesome. It was awesome, Chief. And seeing is believing. It was really cool to see all the lights turn green. And I love the splitting of the Red Sea comment. That was great. Early results from a portion of these intersections pointed to a 32% reduction in response times. The value for any emergency agency is to get there faster, and a 32% reduction in response time will help save lives and property because seconds count, especially when somebody is ill or has been in an accident. They need to get there safely too, however, to avoid secondary damage and the expense associated with that. As I mentioned earlier, faster, safer responses are the goal. Return on investment could also be calculated if you factored in avoided accidents and insurance payouts, et cetera. As a result of the success of this demo, authorities in Clark County are now looking to expand GPS technology to cover additional critical intersections and other local hotspots like Flamingo Road. To verify the data, GPT central management software was installed at the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada. But Public Works, Clark County, and the City of Las Vegas all have access to this data as well. Chief Newman, do you have any final comments or thoughts about this project? I want to also credit Public Works as well. They did a bang up job in working with us to ensure that the modules were working. They were a little apprehensive at first because they felt that they hadn't heard anything negative about the infrared system. And they said, hey, here's something better. Oh, well, now we're hearing problems. <laughs> you know, and so then when uh, we ensured that they let us test us, we can get the data, which was excellent, you know, which we were able to provide once the system was up that, hey, these lights and traffic is moving 20 to 30 percent better and faster, Public Works bought in because they are the gatekeeper. And since then, we've looked at other intersections throughout the valley that we can, uh, you know, implement the system. You know, at least in my personal opinion, I think that as we 
continue to grow, I think we're going to look at uh, other areas valley-wide, even including uh, in the city, that I think that could definitely uh, utilize this system. we got to give it to those guys, to uh, Marvin Fogart and his staff. I mean, we came in, we met. It was, it was a good working relationship, and, and I think that that is a tribute to really Chief Washington and all of us working together with all of our department heads and being able to have those relationships where we can get things done. But I've always said that, you know, hey, it doesn't matter what rank you are, what, how high up you are, if you don't have those relationships with the other department heads in the city, you won't get nothing done. You know, so great point. So just in closing, what would you say is the most beneficial attribute of using the GPS system? I think what it did, it has helped the public and our visitors get out of the way a little bit more quicker because sometimes if you've been in a, in a car and a car truck comes screaming up on you, you kind of get paranoid, don't know where, you know where to go. What it's allowed is the people to move forward and pull over to the right. I think that is the biggest assist that has helped the drivers is that is giving the public more time to move forward and get out of the way of the emergency responders. I think that is the biggest club. And lastly, we'd certainly like to express our thanks to Clark County Deputy Fire Chief Eric Newman for his interview. It was really great to talk with him, and we are very happy to hear that the technology upgrade is helping out significantly in Las Vegas. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, and talk to you guys soon. Okay, now let's travel across the country and talk about another successful GPS implementation in Brookhaven, New York. Brookhaven is in Long Island, a short drive from New York City. With nearly 500,000 residents, gridlock roadways and thoroughfares are very common. For more than 10 years, the infrared system has helped alleviate the gridlock at nearly 500 intersections and on more than 500 fire department vehicles and ambulances. However, as time went on, town officials realized the need for a system that could accommodate the unique terrain of the region. Tight turns and obstructions compromise traffic signal preemption, where first responders have to reduce their speed significantly to navigate around cars and pass through intersections, affecting their response times. The Opticom GPS solution was proposed, and each of the 42 fire departments in the greater Brookhaven area provided letters with universal support from its volunteer forces endorsing an upgrade to Opticom GPS. The need to protect the welfare of Brookhaven residents more effectively while minimizing maintenance costs and gaining more control of the intersections was essential for faster, safer emergency response. With the help of Opticom GPS, town officials received improved performance with less of an impact on their budget. Officials noted that the Opticom GPS system was inexpensive to maintain, making it an excellent investment. To wrap up the webinar today, we've moved back across the country to one of my favorite cities, Bellevue, Washington, for one last example of a successful GPS upgrade. Bellevue's population is now surpassing 130,000 and causing them to experience in increased traffic pressure. The challenge has been to accommodate the growing number of motorists without a requirement for additional resources. For the past several decades, Bellevue has used the Opticom infrared traffic signal priority system at their 185 intersections. Bellevue needed to streamline routine maintenance tasks at intersections and maximize its resources without compromising their budget. The city began to transition from Opticom infrared system components to Opticom multi-mode components as part of its equipment replacement strategy. Using multi-mode equipment, they could begin installation of GPS at select critical intersections and expand out from there. Multi-mode phase selectors are compatible with the current infrared technology and GPS traffic signal priority as they look forward, allowing their responders from neighboring communities to trigger traffic signal preemption when mutual aid was needed. These new components also allow for a seamless transition to GPS technology in the future. More than 75 intersections have now been outfitted with the new Opticom equipment. And every year, a potential for 30 additional intersections will receive new Opticom equipment as part of their city's replacement strategy. 
Each of those intersections will be connected directly to Opticom's central management software, so real-time data can be used to improve emergency response service levels and reduce operating costs. Opticom Traffic Signal Priority offers seamless systems that hold users accountable, simplifies maintenance, and improves performance from one town to the next. Both the Bellevue and the Brookhaven case studies are available for download on our website at www.gtt.com, as well as the infrared to GPS conversion white papers. Okay, on the screen is my contact information. If you'd like to learn more about the Las Vegas upgrade or learn more about other cities who have successfully upgraded to GPS, please feel free to contact me or your local GTT regional sales manager or any of our GTT Opticom authorized dealers across the country. In addition, a link to the GTT website is displayed for access to recordings of related webinars that GTT has hosted earlier this year. At this point, I'd like to open it up for any questions. Thanks, Dewey. We have had a couple of questions come in throughout the presentation. Um, the Bellevue story actually brought up a few questions about mutual aid. So can you describe how the mutual aid works and if a neighboring city has a different technology, how the technologies communicate together? Uh, there we go. Can you hear me? Sorry, do you, can you say that again? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me now? No, we can hear you, Dewey. Okay, uh, with regards to automatic and mutual aid support, I uh, just wanted to let you know that um, uh, GTT has developed a system that we can be uh, able to support infrared and GPS all at the same time. So if you have concerns about a neighboring agency that's still using an infrared technology, but your city is moving forward with GPS technology, we are backward compatible with uh, infrared as well as forward compatible, so we can simultaneously support both technology uh, in the intersection uh, at the same time. So I hope that answers the question effectively. If not, uh, we can certainly do another run now. All right. There's one other question here. It's a little bit hard with all the phone lines open now, but um, I'll try to ask it also. Um, so the question was in regards to the pedestrian preemption rule. So are the pedestrian preemption rules um, that might slow down the change? Yeah. Yeah, as far as uh, how preemption calls are handled, that is a function of the controller. So it's up to each individual city uh, to determine how they want to handle a preemption call relative to uh, pedestrian crossing. So we work very closely with the city to ensure that, uh, that their particular uh, uh, wishes are enforced. And that, again, is a function of the controller, not so much uh, the preemption equipment. So, um, you know, again, the key here is uh, the ability to customize and work directly with the city or the agency and fulfill their wishes in how the uh, preemption call is handled. All right. But I'd like to get all of them. Um, there's always a question about what is the price difference? Yeah, the great question always comes up about pricing. Uh, the good news about GPS, it's actually a little less expensive to install GPS uh, versus infrared. Uh, as mentioned in this presentation, we only need to install one GPS antenna to serve all four directions at the intersection. So, uh, with infrared, you typically require two uh, or four case, uh, infrared detectors, so you have additional cable. Uh, oftentimes, you have to check the intersection for infrared. Um, with GPS, we mount the antenna on the pole to the cabinet, and so it's a shorter cable pole. 
and uh, we can typically uh, avoid having folks down the intersection. So, uh, in short, uh, yes. Sorry, there's still a little bit of disruption on the phone, but um, I'm still going to power through. One last question here. Um, do you have any advice that you can give about uh, when the question comes up, if EV, EVP is disrupting traffic flow? Sorry, Andrea, I couldn't hear that last question. I apologize. Similar cost to buy this. All right. I'm not sure uh, where the background is coming from, but um, the question was, what advice would you give when questions arrive about EVP disrupting traffic flow when using the technology? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out about GPS capabilities is uh, our ability to tie into the turn signal of the emergency vehicle or the bus. Uh, so, for example, if you have an emergency vehicle that's uh, approaching an intersection and they're going to be turning right or left, we can actually pick up that signal. And uh, so we're not causing disruption forward of the vehicle if they're turning off a specific route. So uh, that will avoid traffic disruption forward. Again, we work very closely with the cities, counties, uh, and agencies to uh, ensure that their wishes are, are enforced in the uh, in the treatment of the traffic signal preemption request. And so uh, we're very flexible with that, but uh, in terms of traffic disruption, uh, we try to minimize that as best we can. But at some point, I think you're going to have to. That's a great point, Dewey. Um, we have one, one more question I see coming in. Um, what interference can be expected with cloud cover or other weather interference, solar flare or the like? No interference. Yeah, we typically don't experience any of those interference issues or problems with our GPS. Uh, our GPS operates on a 2.4 gigahertz. Uh -huh. proprietary radio system. It is spectrum hopping and spread spectrum, so it's a secure radio network. Mm -hmm. A proprietary radio network uh, which certainly uh, minimizes uh -huh. interference, and uh, uh, it's a maintenance-free type of installation. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's the type of um, uh, uh -huh. GPS antenna that you can literally set at the intersection, and sure. it does not require any future maintenance, uh, unlike the, uh, the infrared detectors, which do require that they be pointed in a certain direction and the lenses be kept clean and unobstructed. So uh, GPS from a maintenance standpoint is, is much more appealing to, uh, to the agencies because uh, there is no maintenance as we go forward. Now, I don't know that, that tree cover like we have. I mean, there's so many GPS satellites. Well, someone had a question. Um, there's another question here um, that we get a lot about the tall buildings. So can they get the GPS reception um, in and amongst tall buildings? Yes, absolutely. Uh, would you we can do some of three or four satellites? Oh, Dewey, you're breaking up. Okay. Um, I think we're about out of time, Andrea, so uh, we're probably going to need to wrap it up, and I'm still getting a lot of background and interference. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up for today. No, I agree. I think we'll definitely follow up with these people individually. Um, but I want to thank you for your time and all your patience, and uh, we hope the webinar was beneficial. My pleasure, Andrea, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you.